Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. Today's going to be a two for one because these questions are really similar. So first question, find all anagrams in a string. Given a string S and a non-empty string P, find all starting indices of P's anagrams in S. Say we've been given a string C, B, A, E, B, blah, 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 and a substring A, B, C. Basically what we want to do is check every substring inside of this string to see if the, there's going to be an anagram of this letter that we're checking for, P. So ABC, start index 0, will have CBA, and that is an anagram. So we'll return 0, we'll add that to our output, and then we'll check the next one to say, all right, BAE, is that an anagram of ABC? And that's not, so we'll just move on to the next one, so on and so forth. So that's pretty simple enough. The trick here is to figure out the best way to check whether two strings or the string and the substring is an anagram. So one way you can do it is to sort both these, both these strings and check if they're equal to one another. So ABC is sorted, CBA sort that, that becomes ABC, and they equal one another, so that's true, they're an anagram. But that's pretty efficient. Um, what about creating a hash map? And we could do that using a hash map of the counts of each key. So ABC will have for A1, B1, C1, and check and create like a hash map for this substring and check to see if these hash maps are equal to one another. And that would be more efficient, but that still leaves the problem of recreating hash maps for each substring, like BAE and AB. Uh, so it's like a waste of space. You'll be creating like who knows how many hash maps each time. So one other solution you can use is a sliding window technique. And what that means is rather than creating a brand new hash map, every time we move to the next index, why not pop off the previous index key or subtract the count to by one and add a new key or add plus one to an existing key inside this hash map and do that each time. And every time we'll just check to see if the hash map of ABC equals the hash map of AB and so on and so forth. And that way we could check to see if they are an anagram of one another. And if they are, we'll add the starting index number. So I'll start writing it out and it'll hopefully become more clear as I start doing this. So first thing, first thing is like, let's just initialize some lengths. Let's say the length, so P is our substring, right? So we'll say that can be our M and that'll be length of P. And what about the length of our entire string that we're checking for? We'll call it n, and we'll say that's length of s. So cool. Now we want to create our hash maps. And luckily, Python has something called a counter object that's going to create a hash map of all the counts. And so that can be made pretty easy. Let's first create a counter object for our substring, right? We'll call that counter s. And that's just going to be counter object with the string. So that's S is our, oh, I'm sorry, P is our substring. Yeah, so that'll be our substring and counter S, this will be our sliding window. So we'll call this counter W. And for this, we want to have a counter, not of the full string, but of like a substring of it. So technically we want to start at the beginning and end at what? The length of our substring, so that'd be M. But we actually need to subtract one here because as we loop through it, we want to add the index number that we're checking. So say that we're checking like CBA, we want to start with just CB and add A and subtract and first check that to see if that equals the hash map of ABC. Then after that, pop off or subtract one for C and in the next loop, we'll add E and then check if that equals to our counter object ABC and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, really the tricky part for this problem is just getting the index numbers right. Uh, so say that we have our loop and we're gonna first check for i in range of what? We wanna start at the first index number that we wanna input into our hash map. So that's just gonna be m minus one, right? No, 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 is it m minus one? It's uh, n, n minus one, that is n minus one. Yep, so n minus one all the way to the end of our full string. So n minus one to n. First thing we wanna do is 
let's first create um, calculate our starting index, all right? And all that's going to be is our st starting index number that we're checking and subtract that by the length of our substring minus one. Um, because remember, if we're checking the entire length because it's zero indexed, we have to subtract one. And that's going to be the starting index for whatever we're checking right now. Okay, so cool. Now we want to add the um, the letter that we're checking for. So that's just I. Uh, so let's see. We want to add that to our sliding window. We'll say, okay, for the key of, let's see, word I. So it's going to be uh, uh, S. I, is that right? S I, yes. Uh, and we'll just add one to that. And now we'll check, okay, are these an anagram? So are these anagrams? So if counter W equals counter S, then we want to add that index number, our starting index number to our output list. So let's initialize that as well. Say we'll call this output, just make that a list. And to our output, we'll just append our starting index, right? So cool. After that, we want to pop off the 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 last key that that we had. So let's see. Basically, or not pop off. We want to subtract one first, right? Because there could be multiple of these, and all we need to do is subtract one from the counter. Um, if it equals zero, we'll actually need to pop that off. But uh, let's just first add that to our sliding window. We'll say, okay, um, s of what our starting index. the S starting index, that key will subtract one. So cool. One thing though is if this equals zero, we need to actually pop this off. And the reason for that is if we have this hash map and it says zero, uh, and we check that against another hash map that doesn't contain that key at all, they'll say these aren't equal to one another, right? Because the key exists, but we want to actually get rid of that key. We want to pop it off. So if it equals zero, we just want to pop this off here. So counter W, we'll say pop off this key. We'll just get rid of that guy. So finally, once we've iterated this entire list, we just return the output. So let's make sure this runs. Oh, starting index not. Did I make a typo? Yep. Starting index, and index, and index. Okay, and cool. So we did pass our test case. Now let's submit that and accepted. So great. What about our next problem? Well, before I go there, um, I'm just going to copy this. So permutation in string, given two strings S1 and S2, write a function to return true if S2 uh, contains a permutation of S1. So this S1 is our substring. We want to see if AB is um, a permutation of that it exists inside the string. So it's the same approach, right? We just move through here and check, all right, is that an anagram? No, is this one? Is this one? Oh, A, B, B, A is, so it returns true. So the only difference here is rather than returning all these starting indices, we'll just return true if it exists. Um, here, A, B, it, like A and B do exist, but there's, it's not going to be a permutation of a substring in here, right? So it's, there's really no difference to the approach. Um, the only difference is I'm going to have to update some of this. So S1 is our substring. So we'll say S1 for that. S2 is the thing that we're checking. Uh, let's see, P1, that's our substring. So that's S1. Here, our counter to this is our string that we're checking. That's S2. Uh, same thing here. What's this? Counter W, so S2, S2. 2s2s2 two, S2, S2. and instead of returning an output we just want to return true or false right so if it exists yes there's an anagram return true otherwise if we're able to go through the whole thing then we can return a false um, and let me make sure there's nothing I missed here uh, let's try submitting that so AB this should return a true cool finally accepted great yeah, so I decided to combine these two because it's basically the same question. It's just asked in different ways. A permutation of a substring is the same thing as an anagram, right? So um, 
pretty tricky. Uh, this counter object makes it a lot easier. You could use like a fixed array of like 26, um, a length of 26 and each index number representing a letter. But like this is a lot easier. Uh, you could use a hash map, but that gets a little bit tricky. So, uh, or this is a hash map, but creating the counter object will require like having a helper method or something like that. So, all right. All right, thank you.